and Jai Gurudev. You have to decide whether you want to take life seriously or you want to take life as a game. Whichever you decide is what it will be. It only is what you make it. How can you feel that there's something underlying in the meaninglessness of one little planet spinning around one little star in the middle of one tiny galaxy and the vastness of the infinite universe. If it's sad, you make it sad. If it's heavy, you make it heavy. If it's scary, you make it scary. It is just what it is, nothing. Just a grain of salt floating around an infinite ocean. Neither good nor bad, nor right nor wrong, nor better nor worse, nor happy nor sad, nor scary nor safe. Just a grain of salt in the ocean. The qualities it seems to have, you gave to it. You did it. Your mind did it. That's evident to you by the fact that everybody gave it different qualities. That which you call scary, somebody else calls exciting. That which you call safe, somebody else calls boring. So which is it? Who's right? That's silly. It is whatever you decide to make it. Period. That which you think is terrible and undesirable, other people would die for. Other people would do anything they could to try to be in your position. Anything no matter what your position is. So, what is it? What do you want to do? Do you want to make this thing serious, heavy, intense? Or do you want to make this thing playful and light? Since it is your decision, you better make the decision. The problem is, if you don't make the decision, you give in to what we call in the trade the default mode. Everything has a default mode. It's the mode that will be if you don't do anything about it. The default mode in this thing is heavy, down, sad, scary, intense, freaky. That's the default mode. Why? That's not a fair default mode. Why is that the default mode? It's a default mode we've discussed a million times. It is mind that is creating your perception of what's going on. And mind was born out of fear. Its nature is fear. It only exists because the soul lost its way. Dropped into identifying with this body. Freaked out and said, my God, who am I? What am I supposed to be doing? And what's my relationship to all of this? And I don't even remember anything. And oh my God, it's all so big and I'm so scary. And and then mind tried to solve this thing by building a world of your own making, of your own building, to try and give you security, to try and give you safety, to try and give you a sense of control, a sense of solidity. And that is what has been built in the mind. But behind it, is this fear, is this complete lack of control and lack of understanding and panic. And so mind has the tendency toward negativity, has a tendency because of how it was born. And so when mind perceives the outside, it is from the point of view of something's wrong, something's going to go wrong, or from the point of view of I need to get it a certain way to be okay. It's all founded on either something's going to go wrong or something is wrong and I can make it better. And even that which you call positive. No, I'm a positive person. I think good things will happen in the future. It will be better in the future. I'm very positive. Things will be better tomorrow, tomorrow. There's always tomorrow. What does that mean? The present's obviously extremely negative if you're sitting hoping for tomorrow. Don't worry, it'll be better tomorrow. So this is the nature of what you carry on inside of you. You carry on this mind. And since it is the veil through which you look at this world, and don't ever forget that, whatever color are your glasses, that's what color the world is. You look through your mind. It is a veil through which you look upon this world. 
and anything you look at is more influenced by your glasses than it is by even it. If I put on glasses that are all distorted and crackled, then everything you see is crackled. If I put on glasses that are very, very dark, then all you see is dark. To see what's actually there, you must remove the glasses. So mind is what gets created out of fear and out of problems. And ultimately, what you see in this world is the reflection of your mind. So you have to decide, is that how you want to live? Do you want the world to be the reflection of your mind and then spend all of your chi trying to fight it? You're only dancing with yourself. There's nothing else going on. Remember, somebody else in your situation would see it totally differently, period. Totally differently. Lots of people. So you see it the way you see it because of your mind, and then you interact with it because of the way you see it. And that's called maya. That's the ultimate of what is meant by maya. You project yourself out into the world, and then you interact with the world based on what you see, but what you see is really yourself. You can't win. You will lose every single time. Because what you're really doing is fighting with yourself. If ever your left hand decides to take up arms against your right, run. Because you lose. (laughs) Whoever wins, you lose. It is the same way in this thing with the world. If you are out there struggling with this world, you are struggling with yourself. And the part of you that is struggling with the world is the part of you that's struggling with yourself. And how can you win by doing that? There is no winning. So you decide, if I have to live on this planet, spirit in the middle of nowhere, I'm going to make it a game. I mean literally a game. Just like basketball or football or golf or anything. It's just a game. It's a sport. It's just something I do because I'm here and i got some time on my hands. That's why you get up in the morning, that's the start of the first quarter. If you use an alarm, that's, that's like the thing that starts the fight or starts the quarter's play. All right? So you start your game and you go through the game. Every game has to have a purpose and principles and rules and, and goals and so on and so forth. All right? What exactly is this game about? It has to have an intention. This game is about having fun. That's not bad, is it? This game is about enjoying your time on the planet Earth. That is the number one underlying principle of this game, is enjoying the experience of your life. And so every moment you must ask yourself, am I enjoying the experience of my life? And don't lie to yourself, because you don't want to kid yourself out of that one. Are you enjoying the experience of your life? And if you find yourself saying no, you got some work to do. You're not playing the game right. You're not playing the game right. When I say, are you enjoying the experience of your life, whatever's happening to you is the experience of your life. Someday you will look back at the time you're living now, and you'll talk about it as what happened to you like you do on all of the stages of your life. Oh, back then I met so-and-so, we got married, and back then I had a job and I did this, back then I had the baby and did this, oh, back then I got sick. You're just describing your life. What you're currently living is a chapter in the description of your life. So when somebody asks, are you enjoying the experience of your life, it's not about what do you want to do, what do you not want to do, or what you're going to change, or anything like that. It's about, you're going to look back someday and there's going to be a chapter written. It's this chapter. Are you enjoying this chapter? Period. There's always going to be something going on in your life. That's what it means to have one. Life is the series of events that present themselves to you as you pass through the time between your birth and death. The only relevant question is, are you having fun? That's your choice. There's no other choice. The series of events are going to take place. Don't worry about it. There they are. They're right in front of you. The question is, have fun or not have fun. And when you take on the game, the master game, the great game, then you sit there and say, if it's true that I get to choose whether I have fun or not, and if the entire experience of my life is just my mind, that's all that's happening, is I am looking through my mind upon the events that are happening, Therefore, all I have to do 
to enjoy every moment of my life is get my act together with my mind. That's all. If your mind stops projecting negativity and fear and insecurity and heaviness onto the experiences of your life, then they won't have any. They'll just be the experiences of your life. Things will be just what they are. A tree will be a tree, a person will be a person, a job will be a job, and food will be food, and everything, a divorce will be a divorce, and a marriage will be a marriage, and birth will be birth, and death will be death, and that's it. It's just whole and complete within itself. So you reach the point where you never forget this principle. The basic underlying principle, it's all you. It's you. There's nothing else going on. And you learn, since games involve practice, people practice for their sports and for their games, your practice is to practice being happy, is to practice learning to work with your mind in such a way that as you're going through the experiences of your life, it doesn't bring you down. It doesn't make you unhappy. It doesn't cause you problems. It doesn't affect your chi. That's your mission, should you choose to accept it. That's what it is. So you look at that and you say, yes, of course I'm going to accept it. I want to have fun with my life. And you have to understand under all conditions, nothing is stopping you, nothing. What it means to have fun with your life is to have fun with all of the experiences that are happening in your life. So now you get into what does practice mean. Practice means that it's not that way naturally because I told you what the default mode is. The default mode is it's heavy, it's melodramatic, and it makes you sad, and it's creepy, and it's bad. (laughs) Okay, That's what goes on inside. creates a mess inside. To change that, you have to sit there and say, okay, if the solution, the win, is to be happy with every moment of my life, then I have to practice being happy with the moments of my life. Right? That's where people go wrong. They sit there and say, I want to change the moments of my life so that I'm happy, instead of, I want to practice being happy with the different moments of my life. Well, you can have all kinds of different moments in your life. Good times, bad times, high times, low times, sick times, healthy times, all kinds of stuff. It's going to go on. That's what we said. All kinds of events that go on. King Solomon said, for everything there's a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. All kinds of things are going to go on. Time for war, a time for peace, a time for love, a time for hate. There's a time for everything. The question is, can you be happy with the time it is now? Can you practice being happy, having fun, being a good sport about whatever it is that you're currently interacting with? It's a game. So either you're having a good time or you're practicing how to have a good time. There's no other thing going on. And so you sit there and you practice. You practice. Now, what does that mean? How do you do that? First, you have to realize that during the times when you don't want to practice, those are also the times that you don't want to admit that it's you. You don't want to look at it in a way that says, this is my mind causing this. This is my mind creating the melodrama. There is no melodrama out there. There's just people, places, things, weather, you know, just like, there's just the unfolding of things. If there's melodrama, if there's intensity, if there's problems, if there's issues, if there's fear, if there's insecurity, if there's guilt, if there's jealousy, if there's anything, it's you. Those things don't exist in the world. Show me guilt. Show me fear. You can't. It's inside of you. Show me like, show me dislike. Show me any of these things. They don't exist. They are inside of you. And so when you're having intense times, you don't want to admit that. You want to say it it is outside. The only thing that's outside is life, going through all its changes. The question is, how do you practice being happy all the time? You don't stand a chance unless you're clear enough to always remember that if you're not happy, you did it. You did it. You have to start with no shame, no blame. It is always you. It is never not you. Now let's get this right. What is always you and what is never not you? The fact that you're having a problem with life. 
it's just life. There it is. Nobody said that it was supposed to be a certain way or not supposed to be another way. It just is what it is. If you want to understand this, think of life as weather. The weather is sometimes rainy for days. Sometimes it's sunny. Sometimes it's hot. Sometimes it's cold. Sometimes it's hurricanes and tornadoes and tsunamis. and Sometimes it's just quiet and still and blissful. It just is what it is. Either you're enjoying all those different states or you're going to have lots of times when you're not enjoying your life because you're not going to change the weather. Nor should you. You have to practice being okay when it's all rainy. You have to practice being okay when a hurricane comes through and you had to board up and then not go to work and do this and do that and all kinds of things. It gets dark and you lose your power and you have to stay together and camp out. And you know, it's fun. It's okay to have fun. That's what you're supposed to do. Have fun with everything. So all the different weather situations, I think you understand. If you're not having fun with them, it's you. I can remember even as a little boy looking at the window in Miami when a hurricane was coming and all the trees were bending over and I could see that that big tree in front of me was bending way over and it was right in front of my window. And I was sitting there watching thinking, oh boy, it's going to fall. And we went out in the middle of the eye and it's like any of you guys have been around hurricanes do that stuff. You know, we'll crawl away and get scared to death and oh, is it over yet? And this thing. Unless it's Andrew, then you go live in a closet and get to tell those stories for the rest of your life. It's fun. Even being scared is fun. So you do that with the weather. Why don't you do it with everything else? You don't blame the weather. If somebody said to you, oh, I'm so, just so depressed when it rains, you don't say, well, fix the rain. You say, come on, man, there's nothing wrong with the rain. It's fun. Play in it. Have fun. Have fun. It's a command. Have fun. That's God's command. I created the heavens and earth not so you could have a melodrama and suffer, for God's sakes. I mean, the whole universe goes on with all these stars exploding and, oh, I'm so big. And then I made this tiny little thing like an aquarium and I made it so sensitive and gentle, very different than the trillions of degrees of the sun. You know, it's like, wow, I was so fragile, guys. I treated you so careful. Then I put you down there and look what you do. You melodrama about every little thing. You're supposed to be having fun. And if you are not enjoying your journey and having fun, then the next thing you're supposed to do is understand it's you. It's not life. It's you. There's something wrong with you that you're unable to enjoy the experiences that are being given to you. Every experience of your life is a gift from God. That's what it is. Let's say it's time for Christmas. In most families... People go out and they try to buy something for somebody. And they try to figure out what somebody might like or what they would like to give them. And they just give it to them. That's what they do. They don't ask them, what do you want, and send me a list. Why, it's not about what they want. It's about the fact that you bought them something and loved them and gave them something. Isn't it? That's how God looks at it. This is about my loving you and giving you stuff. Right? And every minute I just keep giving you stuff. All kinds of stuff. They're presents. Your moments are presents from God. All right? That's what they are. And so the question is, where did you come up with the idea that you're supposed to sit there with the presents and get mad at them and get unhappy with them and get depressed because you wanted something different? How would you like it if you live in a home and that's what happened when the parents gave you presents? A little kid went under the tree and said, what is this? <laughs> well, you don't even know who I am. I don't want this. This is the last thing in the world I ever wanted. Right? God, can I trade it? Can I take it back? How much is it worth? I ain't going to get no presents next time. <laughs> it's not in a single house any you lived in. You get a present another time. And yet he keeps giving you your days and your nights. Every single moment he keeps giving you experiences. And you just get to the point where you realize if you are not enjoying the experiences of your life, there is something wrong with you. And I started the discussion by telling you what's wrong with you. Mine. It can only be mine. That's what does it. It's the only thing that can do that. It steals from you your right to enjoy your life. You have to learn at some point how to not let it do that. 
Because if it's capable of doing it, it will do it. If not today, tomorrow, that's what it will do. It will take it away from you, period. So you must reach a relationship with your mind where that's not allowed in here. It's just like your body. Many of you may have noticed that if you don't exercise discipline, your body will keep eating until you're sick for a few days. It is how it is. <laughs> it likes something. It just won't want to stop. It's just a funny situation. But yet you've learned to some degree or another, whatever, greater or less. So you practice the discipline so that you can optimize your well-being. It is the same thing with your mind. You cannot leave the mind alone to create hell in your life. And then the mind will always blame the outside. You have to get a relationship with your mind that works. That relationship, as I've discussed numerous times, is not renunciation. That's not what it's about. It's trying to see whatever the mind likes and then never get near it. Don't do anything. It's not. The relationship is about understanding that you want to have fun. And if you have a party pooper around you, deal with it exactly like you would deal with a party pooper. Right? You stay home, I'm going out. You want to be like that? You stay home. I'm not going to fight with you. Because to fight with you means I've got to stay home and get in your stuff. I'm not going to do it. You stay home, I'll go out. You learn to be separate enough from your mind to where if it wants to create melodrama, you just leave it alone. You have fun. And just play. Now, play means that you understand that nothing that happens in any of the circumstances of your life makes any difference. There is no win or loss except for that you're having fun. If you have fun with everything throughout all the experiences of your life, you won. You won. You enjoyed your life. What more can God ask of you? What more can you ask of life that you enjoyed yourself? I mean, there's nothing you're going to do that's going to last. No one's going to remember you anyway. And why would you want them to? You won't be here to enjoy it. There is nothing to get other than the joy of the experience of life. So you deal with your mind by kind of saying, this is where I'm going, where do you want to go? Because, you know, you're free, you do what you want. It made make no difference to me. You want to stay home and pout, stay home and pout, I'm going out. So you just abstract yourself from it, refuse to get involved in it, and enjoy what's happening to you, whatever it is. Even if it's something that you thought you wouldn't want, stop thinking. Look at the here and now and enjoy it. Enjoy what you're doing. Enjoy where you're going. Enjoy what's happening to you. Enjoy who you're interacting with. Enjoy the, the fact that words come out of your mouth when you move it. <laughs> Just enjoy the tiniest little things that are happening in your everyday life. And let that be the goal of your life. The enjoyment of your life. No other goal. No other goal. Only that. I think that if you keep your center and your consciousness, you will figure out how to do that. I want to tell you it's doable. Is it easy? Hell no. Why should it be easy? It's the highest win. You can't name a single thing that could happen that's higher than that. That is by definition enjoying every moment of your life. There's nothing higher than that. In fact, we talked about goals last night, didn't we? And we set a nice one for you. You wake up in the morning, and the moment you wake up, you're like a little kid for Christmas. You are so enthused and excited about getting out of bed to see what's going to happen today, <laughs> to play with it and so on. And then throughout the entire day, you're just turned on by what you're doing or not doing. And everyone you meet, it's fun. They're like toys. People are toys. And you play with them and interact with them and just have some fun. It doesn't make any difference whether they like you or don't like you or whether they think you're a toy or not. It'll make no difference. They're just wind-up toys. You never know what they're going to do next. And you just have fun with them. And there's nice ones and mean ones and good ones and bad ones and tall ones and short ones. And they're fun. And you just play. And you feel respect and love for them. Because really what you're doing is playing with God. You understand that? Sometimes I see it that way. That the, all the power and all the stars and all those explosions and nebulae and this humongous vastness of power that's exploding in the universe. That exact force is who's looking through those eyes at you. Who's feeling through that heart. 
who's speaking those words that are being said to you. You understand that? It is literally that being who is living through all living things. Whether they know it or not is irrelevant. There is only one living conscious force in the universe. And that's what it does in its playpen when it's free on recess. When you look out in space. That's when it doesn't have to be gentle. Right? When you feed the fish, you're very careful and you come in, you fight, and then you go out and you play and you throw bats and balls around. But when you get down to the ants, you're very, very, very careful. That force, the infinite, explosive, unharnessed force, is exactly who looks at you through all of everyone's eyes and interacts with you. So you have fun that way during the day. And then at night, not a thought. Never again. Will there be a thought about what happened today? Not a word. Nothing that was ever said. Nothing that was ever done. Nothing that anybody ever did. You completely let go and neutralize the whole thing. It already had its purpose. It was the fun of today. Now, tomorrow, you wake up again the same way. Each day complete and whole, filled with its own joys and challenges and ecstasies and loves and respects. That's what it means to live life. That's what it means to live life. You're supposed to have fun. Stop creating melodrama. Enjoy the moments of your life. So you look at this even further and you say, how am I going to do that? And we've been through it a million times. The great way is not difficult for those who have no preferences. That's how you're going to do it. The great way is not difficult for those who have no preferences. When you see your mind creating what you want and what you don't want, you will see yourself getting unhappy. You have to be willing to play the game and make it a game of cutting through that duality. That too must be a game. Even your interaction with the mind has to be fun, light, a game. Why do I have likes? Why do I have dislikes? I'm going to let them go. I'm going to like what I don't like. <laughs> it's just so, so much fun. And nothing's big enough to say, no, this one really matters. The minute something's big enough to say, well, this one's an exception, this one really matters, you're dead. There can't be any that are big enough. I mean, how big is big? You're on a planet spinning in the middle of absolutely nowhere. And you're going to leave soon. How big can big be? Don't let your mind do that. So this is how you turn life into a phenomenal game. A game of ecstasy. A game of joy. A game of freedom, of liberation. And you play it every moment of your life. Because any moment that can't be lived with joy is a moment for practice. By definition, he says, can I, you won't do perfect. How good can I do with this? Because I'm not doing good with this moment. Well, just do a little better. You're not going to get perfect instantaneously, but instead of it bringing you that far down, it only brings you that far down. Or instead of only going this far, you go a little further up. Whatever it is, your practice is to do better at the joy of it until eventually you will have won. And you realize your mind is not going to be able to ruin your life ever again. You've handled such an enormous array and you realized so deeply that there can be ecstasy in anything. There can be joy in everything. There are no goods or bads or rights or wrongs. There's just circumstances you get to practice with. And after enough of this, you will lose the fear of coming down. And when you lose the fear of coming down, it all changes. Because the mind stops panicking. The mind stops saying, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it stops thinking that this one can cause a problem. It realizes nothing can cause a problem. And so even the mind does not react. The mind ceases to be reactive. Or if it is reactive, it lasts just literally as quick as it's happening, it's gone. It's like riding on water. And it doesn't have any effect. But that means you can't buy into it. So this is your challenge. 
This is yoga. This is yoga. This is living yoga to take on the challenge of ecstasy. Buddha's nirvana should be a permanent state. Always there. Never ever leaving you. No matter what befalls you. No matter what happens. Mm, Jackard.